What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Now, I know it might be a little bit early, but I want to start talking about Series 9, aka Series 7.2, uh, or 7.0, 7.1, 7.5, whatever you want to call it. Whatever decimal makes sense. I would say 7.1 actually probably makes the most sense. <laughs> but uh, essentially in Series 9, which starts on May 1st, uh, we'll be reverting back to the Series 7 rules with absolutely no change. I had a theory that maybe they might patch in a few more Pokemon via free update, but unfortunately that isn't the case, which means that uh, we're going to be reverting back to an old uh, rule set. Now, today what I want to cover are five Pokemon that you didn't see too often, with the exception of Colossal, uh, too often in Series 8, but you should keep in mind going forward in Series 9. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day, what Pokemon did you not see in Series 8 that you expect to see a lot more in Series 9? Let me know in the comment section down below right now, and let's get into it. So first off, I want to talk about Colossal. Obviously, Colossal went nowhere. We all saw Colossal on how strong it could be uh, with Zacian at its side. Zacian and Colossal was a really strong combination because Colossal would mainly be your Dynamax target in the same way that Lapdog was a really good combo uh, with Lapras being the main Dynamax target. Because Zacian can't Dynamax and effectively functions like another Dynamax Pokemon despite that fact, it means that your Dynamax option is opened up to be given to a different Pokemon. Colossal is a very strong option. Uh, in Series 8, and with the combo of Dragapult and Urshifu as two different ways to activate your Pokemon uh, with either Surf or Aqua Jet, respectively, uh, it actually made it a very flexible team. Now, the main difference between Colossal in Series 8 and Series 9 is going to be the fact that you lose Zacian. Beyond that, not much changes. If we actually take a look at Colossal usage, uh, back in Series 7, you're going to look at it and be like, hey, this looks a lot like those Series 8 teams that I faced. Uh, now, where is Colossal? Right here. So, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Dragapult, Togekiss. Sometimes you see uh, Galarian Moltres next to it, and sometimes you'll even see Colossal on Regigigas teams. Now, if we compare that to Series 8 Battle Stadium doubles, um, we actually look at Colossal usage. You can see that not much changes. It's just the fact that Zacian goes away. So you can see Zacian is the number one partner. You'd still run Incineroar, Dragapult, Urshifu, Rillaboom, Amoongus. It's all very similar. Now, there was a Dragonite team going around with Colossal, but that was kind of bad. <laughs> In my opinion, I didn't have fun with it. Uh, however, Colossal being a strong Pokemon that sets up a very dangerous field condition where only rock types are immune to it, given the fact that there were very little rock types in Series 8 made it even stronger. Um, there aren't many rock types in Series 9 either. Uh, basically, for the next four turns of the game, you'll be taking one-sixth chip damage, which doesn't sound much, but when you take into effect that that's on top of all other damage you're taking, it is a significant amount and it's absolutely busted in my opinion. Uh, Colossal also does have tools to defend itself versus common Pokemon that might check it. Uh, Heat Wave turning into Stab Max Flare at plus 2 can pretty easily deal with uh, Metagross, uh, even if it's Dynamaxed, meaning that Metagross's Max Quake won't be able to deal with this thing very effectively. Solar Beam means that it can defend itself versus things like Rotom Wash, Tapu Fini, other very common water types in the format. And just having, you know, Meteor Beam. Uh, turn into the strongest possible max rockfall this thing has or max vocalith uh, means that this thing on the first turn is going to be doing a lot of damage and is a very difficult pokemon to deal with your main options for dealing with it are usually going to be setting up trick room having uh, your own urshifu at your disposal getting screens off uh, going for a max quake with a ground type that can deal with this thing uh, just getting rid of it as soon as possible or just denying the setup is going to be your best option so yeah colossal going nowhere very strong option next up is rotom heat now, Rotom Heat we actually didn't really see much of in Series 8, mainly due to the fact that Kyogre was one of the strongest um, compositions that you could run. Torn Ogre is really strong. While Rotom is an electric type, it's also a fire type that naturally gets outsped by Kyogre. So even if you have like a Tailwind on your side to try to compete with the Kyogre's Tailwind, it's not doing much. Now, Rotom Heat in Series 9 will be a much different story. Uh, it's a decently bulky Pokemon once you Dynamax it, because it does have very high defenses at 107 and 107. Uh, that 50 HP will be doubled, allowing you to eat hits a lot more easily. Uh, and with, you know, a flexible choice of items between Safety Goggles or uh, Citrus Berry, you can actually do a couple of things. The Citrus Berry set will allow you to eat a hit uh, after going for a Nasty Plot, then Dynamaxing and dealing a ton of damage to everything. Where Safety Goggles actually might be more common now. 
Now, before Citrus Berry was the most common way of running Rotom, I think Safety Goggles is going to overtake that for one particular reason. We've had a lot of time to realize how good Venusaur is in this format. And while Venusaur could have made this list, it's something that hasn't gone away at all. So, you know, with Colossal, I just wanted to give a mention to because Colossal did see a slight decrease, but not as much. Venusaur saw an increase because of how good Sun was. The fact that we all know how good Venusaur is and the fact that Venusaur no skill is still going to exist uh, means that Rotom Heat players might adjust to running safety goggles more often than not, allowing themselves to never have to risk going to sleep uh, and being able to just instantly annihilate that Venusaur with very little risk to their own Rotom Heat. Uh, just being able to get off a plus two max flare, being able to set up electric train for its partners that aren't going to be immune to the sleep powder is really huge because you're going to be able to avoid that. On top of that, Rotom Heat's typing allows it to deal with a variety of things. Metagross, Tapu Fini, all these other really common Pokemon don't really have many switch. Like there aren't very many switch-ins to Rotom Heat Stab is what I'm trying to say. If we look at the Series 7 usage, um, you can see Incineroar doesn't like a plus two max lightning. Tapu Fini doesn't. Glacier doesn't like dealing with this thing. Rillaboom doesn't like dealing with this thing. Regieleki not only doesn't have very moves, many moves to hit it with, but doesn't like eating the hit. Regular Urshifu doesn't like it because its special defense is low. Porygon doesn't really care. Um, Landorus, it doesn't resist it. Like there are very few resist to both of its stabs is the point I'm trying to get across. You have to look really, really far to find one. Uh, Heatran almost fits the bill, but yeah, it's very difficult to find something that resists both electric and fire. So that's why it's such a powerful Pokemon in the format that I think we're going to see a lot more of. Regigigas actually saw a decrease in usage when Series 8 came out, and I don't think that was warranted. In my opinion, Regigigas could have been just as strong in Series 8 as it was in Series 7, even more so. The same thing that Colossal and Venusaur experienced, uh, or Colossal and Lapras experienced, how if you run Zacian next to it, you can very comfortably Dynamax your Regigigas. In fact, I would say it's a very strong composition. Now, Regigigas was absurdly powerful because of its high speed tier in Series um, in series 7. Uh, in Series 9, it's going to be the exact same rule, so it's going to be the same speed tiers. There aren't very many things that outspeed it. Um, with Weezing next to it, it's going to turn off that slow start ability, making it so you have full speed and full attack. Uh, at full speed, with abilities turned off, Venusaur can't put you to sleep before you attack it. Uh, Thunderous can't get a Defiant boost from you going for a max strike on it and dealing a ton of damage, or just straight up KOing it with max uh, Hailstorm. Um, things like Cinderace, if you see it once in a while, won't be able to go for stab max airstreams. Incineroar can't intimidate you. This thing was absurdly powerful in Series 7, uh, and I think it's going to be just as powerful in Series 9 because of that. Series 9 is pretty much just Series 7 retrospect. Uh, the fact that this thing is able to lower everything's speed with a max strike uh, and KO most things that don't resist it mean that's very difficult to deal with. You have a couple of ways of dealing with it. Prankster Will-O-Wisp is an option. Prankster Tailwind into, or not Prankster Tailwind, a fast Will-O-Wisp and a fast Tailwind. I forgot that you're turning off abilities here. Uh, are a decent way of dealing with it because you're going to be able to outspeed it with other Pokemon that might be able to do it. Uh, weakness Policy Metagross isn't terrible because while you are going to get your speed lowered because your clear body's turned off, if you set up light screen or some way shape or form of decreasing the damage you could go for max steel spikes versus this thing and maybe take the hit uh there are very few options for dealing with regigigas it's a very difficult composition to play around the main thing that regigigas has to deal with its achilles heel is wheezing itself while wheezing is able to deny trick room with taunt and stuff um if your opponent plays smart they can very easily deal with it they can go ahead and remove the wheezing and once wheezing's gone regigigas is all but useless so yeah Regigigas is a very strong Pokemon. I think it's going to be seeing just as much uses uh, in Series 9 as it did in Series 7. Glacier had to live in the shadow of Calyrex Ice in Series 8. No longer will it have to do that. While Glacier is kind of a worse Calyrex Ice because it doesn't get unnerved and it isn't as bulky and doesn't hit as hard, it is still really bulky and really strong and even slower in Trick Room. That was the main advantage it had over it, so you still saw Glacier from time to time sometimes on Sun Team, sometimes on Hard Trick Room Teams in Series 8, it's going to see even more usage now. And people really struggle to deal with it because in, it has like stab for everything. It has stabs for dealing with Incineroar. It has stabs for dealing with like Arcanine if you want to run that Intimidator. It deals with Lander's Therian. There aren't very many Intimidators that deal with this thing. Its main weakness is just screens or the Trick Room not going off. But even then, Dynamaxing a Glacier, it's going to be eating a hit. Base 100 HP, base 130 attack, or base 130 defense base 110 special defense with base 145 special or physical attack means that it's hitting like a truck and it's going to be eating hits like a tank so this thing's absurd um 
yeah, uh, burning it's going to be its main issue, but it does like to sit next to Tapu Fini in many situations because of their type synergy, as well as the Misty Terrain blocking statuses. So Glacier is going to see a high spike in usage, in my opinion. It's going to be a really powerful Pokemon that people really need to figure out how to deal with. Um, there are many ways of dealing with Glacier if we look at usage stats. Celesteela can kind of sit on it. Um, Stekateka doesn't like sitting on it, to be honest. It can't comfortably do it. A Max Quake would do a lot. Um, but there are a few options. Reggie Rockets a weakness policy boost from it. Rotom Wash doesn't mind dealing with it at all because it can go for a nasty plot, resist all of its hits, go for a plus two max geyser and stuff. So there are a couple of options, but uh, none of them are like amazing. So yeah, uh, Prankster Willow Wisp isn't bad. Intimidate Spam if you can cycle the right way, uh, you'll be fine. But Glacier, you're a very strong Pokemon. Tyranitar is something that I think a lot of people have forgotten about especially with Series 8 coming out and all the weathers except for Sand being viable. Well, Sand and Hail. Uh, basically, we made Sand look like Hail in Series 8. Uh, sand is still a pretty decent composition in Series 7, uh, so in Series 9 it will be as well. Uh, the fact that Kyogre doesn't exist and Groudon doesn't exist mean that it has less competition for weather setters um, and less weather wars going on. On top of that, it's a great Dynamax Pokemon. Weakness policy is amazing. The fact that it got Lash out recently in the Isle of Armor, well, I guess not recently, but the fact that it got Lash out um, after the game's initial release means that it has a very strong um, way of dealing with stat drops. Like if you drop its attack, it's still going to hit you for double power Lash out. If you go for like a Bulldoze Weakness Policy set, Lash out does absurd amount of damage. Uh, it's a really strong Pokemon. I think that people have really forgotten about it. On top of that, it's a great way of checking Rotom Wash. The sand makes it easier for it to switch in on Colossal's um, moves that it wants to go for. It can easily take a plus two uh, max Vocalith. Uh, it resists the fire move and even the grass move that it wants to go for. It's going to eat it with the sand up. Tyranitar is honestly a phenomenal Pokemon. And while it doesn't deal with close combat Glacier, if you do Dynamax on it and you get an Intimidate off, it can take the hit and it will be able to one-shot Glacier with a plus two max Rockfall. So yeah, I think Tyranitar is something that people are going to have to think about going forward. Uh, that's my list of just Pokemon that you didn't really see before, except for Colossal, uh, that you're going to see a lot more going forward. Let me know your list in the comment section down below. Who do you expect to see? Who do you expect to not see anymore? Uh, you know, despite the fact that you're not going to be seeing Kyogre and stuff. You're not going to be seeing restricteds. Let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.